I don't want to go too much back into the past here, but I want to read you the title of uh, Garrett's uh, doctoral dissertation. Uh, classical and Modern Influences on American Political Thought, The Political Theories of Thomas Jefferson. Was Thomas Jefferson a Republican? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think both parties claim Jefferson. Um, his party was actually known as the Democratic Republicans. The Jeffersonian Party That's was the Democratic Republicans. And the other party was the Federalists. So, I mean, there wasn't mm -hmm. a Democrat versus Republican Party. Now, I think the argument can probably be made that Jefferson's Democrat Republican Party evolved into the current Democratic Party. So I think it's fair for Democrats to claim Jefferson as one of theirs. And then Lincoln sort of is the first Republican uh, president. But uh, yeah, they, they uh, when I was in graduate school at Rutgers, and there are very few jobs, as there are now, very few teaching jobs. And I decided to write my dissertation on Jefferson. The joke at Rutgers was, what are you going to do with that? Go to Virginia? <laughs> <laughs> so I did. Right. And, and I wanted to come to Virginia. I like Virginia. I wanted to teach at a small college. And I wanted to come to the University of Virginia, founded by Thomas Jefferson. So perfect. It were all worked out really well. Yeah. And uh, now in terms of principles, I would say that Jeffersonian principles are more Republican Party and current Democrat Party. He was very Lockean and very interested in individual rights, freedom, free enterprise. He was a businessman. And uh, culturally, he was uh, pretty conservative, uh, pretty liberal for his time. But by today's standards, he would be considered quite conservative on family matters and religion and so on. So I would, I would claim Jefferson for the Republican Party, ideologically, if not historically. You know, most of the time when I talk to one person from one party, it's kind of like they imply that, well, maybe we'd be better off without the other party entirely. Is, do you have any feelings on that? We need this two-party system, don't we? Two oh, or three. Oh, absolutely. I believe completely in the two-party system. And it's just like Britain, which I teach. British politics and British constitutionalism, um, you have to have two parties. You have to have an in-party and an out-party, or they would say the government and the opposition. Um, to keep each honest, you have to have, which is a good Republican principle, well, competition. How about, how about a third party? <laughs> Tell us about the Tea Party, if, third parties if you want don't, to enter into that just a tiny bit. Third parties don't work too well in this country. It's better to have an in and out. Uh, in Britain, you know, they have the Social Democrats, which is a great joke. They think, you know, it's not really uh, liberal or conservative. It's nothing. Um, but the Tea Party is, is definitely, you know, more Republican than Democrat. It's, uh, after all, based on the idea of the Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party. It's had a big, big impact on the Republican Party, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they're basically conservative Republicans, uh, whereas the Republican Party does have moderates and does have some liberals. Tea Party is based on the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party were colonists protesting high taxes from Britain who went to the ships in the Boston Harbor and threw the tea off the ships into the harbor rather than pay taxes on them. And so the tea, American Tea Party is sort of the same um, protesting against higher and higher taxes, government control, uh, they would say government corruption, like the British government, government corruption, oppression, um, robbing freedom and incentive, uh, borrowing uh, excessive amounts to spend. So, so there's sort of you know, traditional you know, limited government, uh, leave most of life to the private sector, the private life, private business. Uh, limit the government to doing defense, police, courts, uh, helping the, 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 the most needy, people who really can't help themselves. But, um, you know, the idea is that that will, the Tea Party, that will make the government more efficient, more honest, less burdensome, and will help the country grow morally as well as economically. Is the Tea Party going to be able to stay alive? Are they going to possibly take over the, the Republican Party? Well, usually what happens with third parties, you know, this happened with the Progressive Party, was more left, left-wing or liberal than the Democrat Party around the turn of the last century. 
and, and basically they became absorbed in the Democrat Party. And the Tea Party movement, most third party movements are absorbed into one of the two major parties. So the Tea Party movement will be, I think, absorbed into the Republican Party. It may not dominate the Republican Party, but it will keep it, I think, true to its principles of individualism, freedom, traditional values. I was reading a good um, editorial, I think, two days ago. Uh, Dion is his name, A.J. Dion, and he was saying that he felt like the uh, Tea Party were actually controlling what's being said, running the floor, so to speak. They're actually giving us the agenda that many people think they're not having much of an impact, but he was saying the reverse, that he thinks they are, in fact, having a large impact on what is said and what is thought this day and time. Do you believe that? Or I think they're having an impact. I'm not sure they're having the dominant impact, uh, but they certainly are having an impact in you know, moving the Republican Party to the right. Um, but they are freshmen. I mean, when you, when you go into Congress as a freshman, you don't have a lot of authority. The more senior members may be more moderate in the Republican Party. And so I think they will have an effect, but I don't think they dominate. Do you see any uh, rising stars in the Republican Party that's going to come up and uh, give Obama a good fight in a couple of years? Well, there, there's a generation of Republicans in their 30s and 40s who are very impressive. I mean, they're very dedicated, like our governor in Virginia, intelligent, dedicated public servant, have very conservative values, but are not the typical politician of, you know, you know, getting into it for the power or the fame. I mean, I'm sure they like power and fame, but they really have principles that they believe these are the right things to do for the best of our country. And uh, that's a force to be reckoned with when you see what the, I mean, New Jersey and Wisconsin. I mean, Virginia's always been pretty conservative, but New Jersey, where I went to school, very liberal state, almost like New York or California, extremely liberal state. Lots of social programs, public unions, uh, historically very dominant Democrat state has a conservative Republican governor who's cutting taxes, cutting government programs, uh, you know, strong family values. Uh, the same in uh, Wisconsin. I, I grew up in Wisconsin, and it was considered the progressive state, fighting Bob La Follette, early progressive. I remember that name. Uh, very <coughs> liberal. Uh, the, Milwaukee, Wisconsin had two socialist mayors in the early 1900s. All those German socialists moved to Wisconsin, and they elected two socialist mayors of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, I mean, a very left wing, very liberal state, Madison, Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, known as very liberal university. Here in the last election, Wisconsin elects a majority of Republicans in their legislature and a conservative Republican governor who immediately start, you know, talking about cutting the budget, reducing programs, incentives for business. Uh, uh, controlling the uh, public labor unions. I mean, it's unbelievable in, in American history, in Wisconsin history or New Jersey. Um, and it hasn't happened in New York or California yet, but um, I don't think people would have expected it in, in Wisconsin or New Jersey. So maybe, maybe the next conservative Republican government will be in New York and California. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, thank you so much for coming in and uh, talking with us today. We can never really uh, do more than scratch the surface uh, of many of these subjects, but I, I think you've enlightened us a little bit about uh, certainly the Republican Party and brought out a few things that uh, many of us didn't know that you've uh, been in the White House and advised George W. Bush. Uh, uh, we will have future programs and we'll talk more about this, I hope, especially if we get a lot of feedback about that. We may have you back and just just let you talk about uh, George W. Anytime. Some be of us don't, do it. don't understand him or don't. Oh, I'd uh, be happy to enlighten you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay.